So hello, it's John Mandeville here from the Collab 365 Academy. I'm doing a video here to build on what I did yesterday around making your Power Automate desktop flows more robust. And this one, it's really around how to grab data from one application, use a variable, pass it to another. And a really simple example here that I'm going to show you is um, grabbing something from Excel. Now, in my example, it's not a right lot, but it's just some data uh, from an email and then using a variable and popping it into Excel. Um, so I'm actually going to just use the variables that are created inherently in the course of a flow and show you how that works. Really simply, you're going to see here two things from yesterday's tips. Number one, um, make sure when you launch an application, so launch Outlook, you can see I've got the corresponding close Outlook, open and close, keep your pad flows really robust. Um, again, launch Excel, close Excel, use the weights. So whenever you open something, give it a weight. And you can find all these actions by just typing in the keywords over here. Um, then what I've done here is, so I'm going to just open this and show you. I, I've i opened Outlook. Now, it's interpreted it's Outlook on my desktop. You can add some different um, configuration, but this is just opening my Outlook instance, and it gets me a variable called Outlook instance. It's a variable specific to this Power Automate desktop flow. So when I then retrieve email messages, I hook into the Outlook instance. I've put my account name in. So again, it doesn't have, you don't have to do much. You just need to put your account name in and specify the folder. Now I've said, go and get me unread emails only. You can configure this in any way you like. I happen to have an unread email, which has this subject test. So you could have it emails from specific people or the body contains something. Could be a tag or a flag or a trigger. All great stuff. You then get um, an array. Uh, it's a variable, but it is an array effectively. So a whole bunch of email bodies captured in that variable there. Then wait for a bit just to make sure everything's all nice and tidy. I'm then going to use this split text, which basically takes the body, each body, as I go through from the retrieved emails and using a standard delimiter, a space, after spaces in that body, which probably under the surface will be the JSON or XML, I can't quite remember, um, maybe something else or some other format. It just splits it and it gives me text values that I can then work with. But each item that it gets from the body, it now sticks into that variable text list. And you'll see down here, once I've done that, what happens is my text list variable is populated. And you can always see what's inside your variables in the flight of um, your flow here. So I can see I've got, um, let's just open this up. So there's nothing in there right now because I haven't run this. Okay, when I've done all that work, close, uh, sorry, close Outlook, I then open Excel. I'm then basically writing everything that's in that text list, starting at column A1 into Excel. Again, you can play around with this, wonderful configurations, and if you've got, perhaps more complex configurations, then um, by all means, reach out to us on the Academy. We do offer like um, packets of consultancy, which is there to support you really. It's one-to-one -one support. We don't come on and build for you, but what we do do is we'll have a chat like this with you and help you through the specific problems. And if you can't fix them, we'll have a look at it on our tenants and we'll go and try and fix them ourselves and teach you how to do it. Um, so anyway, moving on, I pop it in Excel and I close it. So let's just run this. I'll close down my Excel instant, my Outlook instance, and click play. Now you won't see anything popping up on my left hand screen, but right now my Outlook's just popped up. I have one unread email. So it's got that. I'm just going to pause it. So what it's done is it's waited and it's gone and got some information. Let's have a look in the retrieved emails. Let's see what we've got. So we seem to have some data. Now you can see here the body, you've got all different aspects here, excuse me, all different aspects where there's data, you can use them all to have a look into it. So the body text, there you go. Our one, two, three, four, five is the number I put in the email, okay? So let's just play this and let's just see what happens. So run next action. I'm gonna split all that data and I'm gonna have a text list now, which has got all my data in it. Let's go and have a view. Again, right, let's just have a little look here. 
So what it's done is it's split everything out for me from the retrieved emails. Um, let's just run the next action. We'll launch Excel. Again, that's over on this screen, so you won't see it, but I will show you in a moment. Let's just bring it over because you can actually see it working then. And run next action, which is to wait. I'm making you wait in suspense here. Probably should have put a shorter wait on this. There we go. Right, now I'm going to run the next action. And there you can go. There you go. It's written, um, it's written some of the data that I pulled out into Excel. Now you, you're gonna want to play with this. There'll be the right action to pop the right piece of data into Excel, but I wanted to just show you the principle of how these flow variables work. You can create your own variables. Um, let me just quickly show you that as well. So if I stop my flow uh, and we go into variables. So we can do all sorts of um, things here. A really common one is the, um, the set variable. So we can set our own named variables. Let's just pull it across here, actually, because we might want to do this. Uh, so we might want to do that. We can give it a name. So let's just call it var um, John's test. And the value of that variable can be set to something that we've got in the in the flow. It could be set to another variable, but you can pick it from here. So I can now look in the text list. Um, there's not, an, yeah, so, okay, list of text values. Well, let's just select that. Now, again, you're going to want to experiment with this kind of process. I'm not necessarily getting the right piece of data from my email, but it will be absolutely possible and save it. And all that's really done is var John's test is now going to have something from text list. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and I won't play it, but that's the principle of setting variables. And you can see on the right hand side, you can then see the variable you've got in your flow and you can view what's in it. All sorts of ways to play with it. You have to get a little bit more creative when you're working with data between different applications. But this idea of create variables, store things from your, um, from your Power Automate desktop flow actions into those and reuse them isn't that complex, I hope, having shown it to you. Well, good luck. Like I say, if anybody out there watching this needs a bit of support, come find us on the Academy and let me know uh, or pop us an email on hello at collab365.com.